RCA Victor, world leader in radio, first in recorded music, and first in television, presents transcribed the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show. <laughs> For your enjoyment, here is the Phil Harris Alice Faye Show, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Walter Tetley, Robert North, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Walter Sharp and his music, and yours truly, Bill Foreman. America has always had some of the keenest business minds in the world. Minds of men like uh, Henry Ford, David Sarnoff, and Bernard Baruch. On the other hand, it also has minds like Phil Harris, and, uh, but more about that later. First, a word from RCA Victor. Now, from RCA Victor, world leader in radio, comes a great new achievement in radio. Now, RCA Victor brings you the remarkable tone and sensitive reception of a large radio in a table set only six inches high. This tiny set, RCA Victor's new personal table radio, actually outperforms many larger, costlier sets, offers you the finest listing with the world-famous Golden Throat Tone System. Only RCA Victor could bring you such wonderful performance in such a compact table radio. See and hear this tiny new table model first chance you get. You like the convenience it offers. Since it is personal size, it can fit conveniently on almost any table or shelf. You'll like the beauty of its modern style cabinet, which makes it an attractive addition to any room, home, or office. And you'll certainly like the low price of this brand new RCA Victor table radio. It's only $29.95 plus tax, slightly higher in the far west and south. Choose the tiny dependable personal for yourself or for a wonderful Christmas gift that keeps on giving. See the amazing new personal at your dealers tomorrow. It's RCA Victor's newest and smallest table radio with a famous golden throat. And now the stars of the RCA Victor program, Alice Faye and Phil Harris. <laughs> Alice and her brother William are discussing a matter of importance, and they've locked themselves in the den to ensure privacy. Even Phil and Elliot have been barred from this conference. Elliot, I, I wonder what Alice and Willie are talking about that could be so secretive. I'm worried. Curly, don't let it bother you. It's probably something very trivial. Like what? Well, like how she can get rid of you without splitting community property. <laughs> Ain't no way she can do that <laughs> Besides, Alice is not trying to get rid of me This thing is driving me nuts I can't imagine well, if it's driving you nuts Go in and ask her Assert yourself Don't let her treat you like a child You're right No wife is gonna treat me like a child right. I'm going in Now, Willie, I think we ought to Alice, do... I think it's about time that well, I told... How many times have I told you Not to interrupt when two people are talking? But Alice Just for that, you can't see television tonight <laughs> Oh, gee, honey, Space Patrol is on at seven and I... Wait a minute <laughs> Alice, I want to know what you and Willie are talking about We're talking business I'm thinking of investing in a shop Well, then why are you talking to him? If you want business advice, come to me I got a good business head Ha! <laughs> <laughs> that head of yours hasn't got a brain in it I've got a lot of brains and he can prove it. Go ahead, Curly. Shake your head. Let him hear them. <laughs> Look, Alice, if you have an investment to make, why didn't you consult me? Well, let's face it, Phil. You're a wonderful husband, a good father, a fine musician. But when it comes to business, you're a little on the schnook side. <laughs> I don't think that's very respectful I know just as much as your brother You do, hmm uh, Tell me, Philip What is your opinion on bonds For a suburban project That's guaranteed by the government? An excellent investment Why? Because any bourbon that's bonded by the government Has got to be <laughs> Well, that's just what I expected Phil, will you please leave us alone? You and Elliot go for a walk until I finish talking to Willie, huh? Oh, very well, very well. I know when I'm not wanted. Come on, Elliot. Mm -hmm. Oh, that woman. 
Someday she's going to drive me to drink. <laughs> Why wait for her? I'll drive you. <laughs> I know a place where they serve 10-cent highballs. <laughs> What'd they do? Raise their prices to keep the riffraff off? <laughs> Now that they're gone, Willie, let's get back to business. I think this antique shop I want to buy is a very good investment. But, Alice, why buy an antique shop? You, you don't have the time to run it. I don't intend to. I'm going to let Mother run it. Oh, I see. Oh. Uh, well, where is the antique shop? It's at 5500 East Main Street. Hmm. Wonderful location. They gave me their financial statement, and I want you to look it over. Now, you'll notice that last month they did a... A man getting chased out of his own house. How long does she expect me to stay out here on this lawn? It's a fine thing when a wife won't let her own husband help her with her investments. Yeah. She's got an investment to make. I could do a better job than Willie. If there was only some way I could find out what she's investing in, then I... I... Hey, Elliot. What? I think there's a way I can find out. How? The den window is open. Shall we tippy toe up and drop an eaves or two? <laughs> Curly, you're asking me to peep in windows? This is something I draw the line at. I've never done a thing like that, and I will, will not. Will you be quiet? This is important to me. Now let's walk up to the window. Curly, that's not the way to do it. We have to get downwind. Wiggle up to the window on our stomach. <laughs> then we stand up camouflaged as a bush. <laughs> and then we're ready to peep, eh, Tom? <laughs> Come on. All right. Now, look, be quiet, quiet. No noise. Shh. Listen. Statement looks fine to me, Alice. Well, I told you. It's a wonderful business, and I'm going to buy it. Now, I want you to close the transaction. Here's a signed blank check. See if you can get it for about $800 down. Leave it to me, sis. I'll go right down and see the man. Oh, uh, by the way, what was the address of that store again? 5500 East Main Street. 5500 East Main. Mm -hmm. Right. I'll call you as soon as I close the deal. And don't forget... Don't pay more than $800 down. Did you hear that, Curly? She's going to buy a business. Well, never mind that. Willie's got a blank check signed by Alice Fay. <laughs> a man could rule the world. <laughs> <laughs> they ain't nothing you couldn't buy two of. <laughs> Wonder what kind of a business she's buying. I don't know. But why does she have to send Willie? I could get it for a better price than he could. I wish I had that blank check. That could be arranged. <laughs> we roll them, huh? <laughs> Don't be vulgar. Keep this high class. When he comes out of the house, you jostle him and I'll pick his pocket. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, wait a minute. Do you know how to pick a pocket? What I majored in at college. <laughs> Shh. Here he comes out the front door. Yeah. Let's just take a little piece of him, but be nonchalant about it. Ready? <clears throat> no two people have ever been so in love as my macaroon and I. And when we kiss. And when we kiss. Well, it's like this. Well, it's like this. It's historical. It's hysterical. Let me tell Why, it. certainly, darling. <laughs> What are you two fellas so happy about, you'd think? <coughs> Philip, you clumsy ox, you almost knocked me over. Well, it's a good thing I was in back of you to catch you. Here, let me straighten you up. Get your hands off of me. Off, off, off. Now, get out of my way. I have an important mission. Goodbye. You get it? What do you think? <laughs> Here's the check. Good. And his watch in his wallet. <laughs> Leave those here. All right. 
What should I do with his vest? <laughs> Leave that here, too. Okay. But I'm going to keep his socks. <laughs> I always wanted Argyle. <laughs> you didn't pick him, you peeled him. <laughs> Let's get out and buy that business for Alice. Hey, wait a minute. Huh? What was the address of the store again? 800 West Main Street. 800 West Main Street. Got it. Yeah, and we shouldn't pay more than $5,500 down. Right. Hey, hmm? let's go down in my car, and while we're riding in the car, we'll turn the radio on and listen to one of my records. What makes you think one of your records will be on the radio? Don't ask questions. I've just got a feeling it'll turn out that oh, way. <laughs> Give me some harmony grits and some red sugar cured ham. I want a big bowl of cream gravy, and I'd be such a happy man. If I can see magnolias blossom and the azaleas in bloom, lead me up to the table. I want lots of elbow room. I want some mammy fried hoe cake and some good old black eyed peas. Give me a hay rack full of hot biscuits and make my coffee black if you please. Now if you feed me I'll let Dixie in that style so grand, you gonna have yourself a happy man. Saga molasses, you gonna have yourself a happy man. Pass them hominy grits. Then give me some of that Tennessee hickory cured ham. Then I want a big iron skillet full of that milk gravy. Ouch. You got yourself a happy man. Cause if I can see magnolias blossom and azaleas in bloom, lead me up to that table. Down, Clyde, I want lots of elbow room. I want some mammy fried hoe cake And put a lot of lean bacon in them black-eyed peas Then give me a hay rack full of hot biscuits And make my coffee black if you please Cause if you feed me all a Dixie In that style so grand You gonna have yourself a happy man Hog bone and honey, you gonna have yourself a happy man, a hush puppy papa. You gonna have yourself a happy man. Wow. This is a pretty crummy neighborhood. Why would Alice want to buy a business in a joint like this? I don't think it's a crummy neighborhood. You don't? Well, let's look at that building across the street. That's the worst looking rat trap I ever seen. That ought to be condemned. It has been. How do you know? I got my eviction notice yesterday. <laughs> Look, here's West Main Street. Now, look at these numbers. There's 794, mm -hmm. 796, mm -hmm. 798... Uh-oh, there it is. 800. So this is the shop Alice wants to buy. Hey, she's getting smart. This is a real good business. Yeah. But I wonder why Alice wants to buy a pool room. <laughs> well... Let's go in and buy the place. Look, wait a minute now. Let me handle all the business details. I'll get this joint at the right price. <laughs> well, I did it, Elliot. Here's the bill of sale. Alice is now the proud owner of a pool room. 
<laughs> hey, you got to admit I drove a shrewd bargain. You sure did, Curly. I know what I'm doing every minute. <laughs> Alice wanted to pay $5,500 down. I got the whole thing for $8,000. <laughs> I really had to talk to that guy into selling, you know. He wasn't too anxious to let it go. Oh, I noticed that. There were tears in his eyes as he grabbed the check, jumped into his helicopter, and took off. <laughs> you think we've been taken, Curly? <laughs> no. Of course not. The guy was very honest. He told me if I wasn't happy with the place, he'd buy it back. He left me his phone number if I want to call him. Maybe I misjudged him. What is his number? Number? Yeah. Well, he wrote it here on this card. Let me see. It's Outer Mongolia 7840. <laughs> <coughs> I wonder if that's a toll call. <laughs> Curly, I don't like to put a damper on this deal, but we've been here an hour. There haven't been any customers. Yeah, I did notice that, but there might... Hiya, gents, you want to play some pool? <laughs> oh, no, thanks, thanks. Uh, <clears throat> I just bought the place. Uh, I own it. Hey, you must be my new boss. Uh, I managed the joint. Oh, you're going to make a fortune here. Yeah, I hope you're right, but I haven't seen anybody playing pool. Nobody ever plays pool in here. <laughs> then how am I going to make a fortune? From your bookie joint in the back. <laughs> well, as long as we got something going, bookie joint. Elliot, did you hear that? Alice is buying a horse room. Why? She probably owns all the others in town and wants to add this one to her string. <laughs> oh, no. I'm married to the queen of the underworld. And she told me she made all her money in pictures. She did. Photo finishes. <laughs> no, no. She told me she made it in the movies. Did you ever see any of her movies? No. They were before my time. <laughs> but Mother saw every one of them. <laughs> no, this is impossible, Elliot. Alice don't believe in gambling. She didn't know about the bookie joint, I'll guarantee... Hey, look, bud, I want that back room closed up. My wife just wants the pool parlor. You're kidding. No, I'm not. This is disgraceful. A shocking state of affairs. Come on, Curly, let's get out of this horrid place. Yeah, I never knew they had places like this. Elliot, you're walking the wrong way. <laughs> you're going toward the back room. I know, I want to make a bet before you close the place. <laughs> we ain't got time now. You can phone it in. <laughs> Come on, Elliot, we're going home and tell Alice we bought her her pool room. Yeah. Yeah, I'll bet she'll be proud of you when you tell her the good deal you made. Yeah. And I got another idea. Excuse I... me, fellas, could you tell me... Well, if it ain't the schmoes of Kilimanjaro. <laughs> Curly, don't look now, but the Barracuda is in back. <laughs> what are you fellas doing in this part of town? Attending a wino convention? <laughs> don't be snide. We're here for a very good purpose. What purpose? I just bought my wife a pool room. Ooh, that lucky girl! <laughs> this should thrill her no end. She'll be very happy I bought it for her. Naturally, a woman's a fool to be without her own pool room. <laughs> my wife wants this pool room. That's understandable. This'll make her the envy of the Pasadena women's knitting and keep one foot on the floor, society. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta give you credit for one thing, Mr. Harris. You show imagination. What do you mean? Most men buy their wives stupid things, like fur coats and diamond rings. But not you, joy boy. <laughs> All right, now what's wrong with a pool room? Nothing, but 
but you could have bought us something more practical. Practical? Like what? Like an old draw bridge. <laughs> <laughs> or a secondhand ferry slip. <laughs> Look, kid, there's nothing wrong with my wife owning a pool room. It's a lovely place. It's got eight tables, two pinball machines... And a bookie joint in the back. <laughs> he bought his wife a bookie joint? Aha! I see it all now. It's a plot to get rid of Miss Faye. What are you talking about? You'll have the joint raided, she'll be arrested, and while she's in Tehachapi, it'll give you time to stay home and look for her money. <laughs> I wouldn't do a thing like that. And that's a very nasty thing to say. It certainly is. Besides, it wouldn't do him any good. He already looked when Alice was in the hospital having a baby. <laughs> Never did find the money, did you, Curly? How could I? She took it with her. Never forget her lying there in the hospital bed with a little bundle in each arm. <laughs> one pink and one green. <laughs> I think I heard enough. <laughs> Beat, get along. Curly, don't let him go. He'll tell the cops. Oh, he ain't gonna tell nobody. He's crazy about Alice and wouldn't want to get her into any trouble. No. He's always around. Besides, we closed the bedding room. Oh, that's right. Now, let's get home and tell Alice that we got her the pool room. Come on. Hey, Alice. Honey. Hey, where are you? I got great news for you, Alice. Oh, Listen. tell me later, Phil. Something terrible has happened. I gave Willie a signed blank check and he lost it. Now, I have to call the bank and stop payment on it. That won't be necessary. <clears throat> The check that Willie lost was found by us. Also, his watch, wallet, vest, and socks. <laughs> oh, thank goodness you found the check. Where is it? Don't get excited, honey. Look, we overheard you telling Willie that you wanted to buy a store, so we took the check and went down and bought the place. And honey, I want to thank you for buying a place like that for little old me. Well, I didn't buy it for you. I bought it for my mother. She's gonna run it. <laughs> Your mother? What does the hostess of the farmer's market know about racking up pool balls? Well, what have pool balls got to do with running an antique shop? Well, everything if she's gonna run a tilt. <laughs> antique shop? I believe that's what the lady said. You bought the antique shop at 5500 East Main Street, didn't you? Well, uh, no, 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 we didn't buy that one. Uh, we bought the uh, antique shop at uh, 800 West Main. It's a much better place. Far superior. Oh, <laughs> Phil, I wish you hadn't bought it. Your business sense is... Oh, well, before I complain, I'd better go look at it. I'll go upstairs and get dressed and be right... No, honey, not today. Don't go today. You won't want it. I... Oh, we bought the wrong place. Now, wait till she gets down and sees it's a pool room. Oh, Elliot, what am I gonna do? I suggest you kill yourself. <laughs> In the excitement, she might forget about the pool room. <laughs> Just slash your Will wrist. You cut it me. out, I... Hey, wait a minute. Hmm? I got an idea. Look, I'll keep Alice here as long as I can. Meantime, you go down there and make that pool room look like an antique shop. What? Cover the tables, move in some old furniture, and put a lot of old junk around. Oh. <laughs> Is this the shop you bought? Looks kind of run down. On the outside, yeah. But wait till you see the inside. Come on, let's go in. Hiya, Curly. Hello, Alice. Elliot, what are you doing here? Well, Curly told me to take care of the store until you got here. <laughs> How do you like your new place? Well, it's awfully dismal. And I think the antiques in the other shop were much nicer. Oh, uh, well, Alice, don't be hasty. Why don't you look around the rest of the place? All right, I will. Phil, Phil, you've bought a lot of junk. This furniture is the most broken down, dilapidated stuff I've ever seen. 
I resent that. I took this furniture out of my own apartment. <laughs> I think it's lovely. Me too. Some of the nicest driftwood I've ever seen. <laughs> what is it, early Pismo Beach? <laughs> Bill, I've never seen antiques like they have here. What's this big table here with the, with the green cover? Holy smoke, I forgot to cover one of the pool tables. <laughs> well, what is it? Oh, oh, that, uh, that, uh, that's an antique eating table that belonged to Henry VIII. Well, what are these six holes in the sides of the table that look like pockets? Those? Oh, well, uh, oh, well, I can explain that. You can? <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to hear this one. Honey, those are bone catchers. <laughs> bone catchers? Bone catchers? <laughs> yeah, bone catchers. You see, Henry was a sloppy eater. <laughs> he used to throw bones over his shoulder so his wife put pockets on the table so he'd have some place to put the bones. <laughs> If she believes that, you better get yourself a new wife. Bill. Bill, what are you giving me these stories for? That's a pool table. It is? <laughs> oh, you must be mistaken. Of course she is. What would a pool table be doing in a pool room? <laughs> Pay no attention to him, honey You can see it's an antique shop and nothing else Phil Harris, you didn't buy me an antique shop I've got a pool room Don't forget your horse room in the back <laughs> When I get my hands on you two Elliot, gonna... this is our cue to get out of here, let's go Curly, I'm right with you Open the door I ain't got no time for that <laughs> and Phil will be back in just a moment. But first, a change of pace as we hear a new Red Seal record release by RCA Victor. Listen. Recognize it? It's the classic overture to the Barber of Seville, magnificently recorded by the NBC Symphony Orchestra under the magic baton of Arturo Toscanini. And on this same RCA Victor 45 extended play record, Toscanini conducts a second immortal selection, the Magic Flute Overture. And the wonderful part is this single record with both overtures can be added to your library of great music for only $1.50. Buy it at your RCA Victor dealers tomorrow. And while there, see RCA Victor's new Victrola three-speed attachment. It's the world's easiest playing three-speed record changer. The center's the secret. Slip on the large center spindle and you can play your 45 RPM records automatically. Slip it off and you can play other speed records automatically. See the new Victrola three-speed attachment at your RCA Victor dealers tomorrow. We're a little late, thanks, and good night, folks. Good night, everybody. Right. Included in this program transcribed was Herb Vigran. The part of Julius was played by Walter Tetley. Hey, Alice, what record you got there? My latest RCA Victor hit, Hi Diddle Diddle? Well, no, Phil. It's Frankie Carl's new RCA Victor album of Top Pops. Frankie Carl? What does he sing? Phil. Okay, okay, so he plays the best piano around. Let me see the selections. Auf Wiedersehen, sweetheart. Wish you were here. Say, there are eight big hits. Sure, Phil. And Frankie Call's album of top pops is available on all three speeds at RCA Victor Record Dealers. <laughs> Thank you. 
Tonight here at Tallulah on Theatre Guild on the Air over NBC.